Sacred Goddess Hecate, help me manifest justice in my actions, temperance in my soul, courage in my choices, wisdom in my words, and compassion towards all beings. Hi, uh, my name is Renee Olson. I am a torchbearer and a keybearer for the Coven of Hecate. And today we are gonna be continuing our series with on a couple of cards on temperance. And that is one of the five virtues of the goddess. So we've already talked about compassion. We talked about compassion two weeks ago. We talked about how to live your life in such a way to bring more compassion um, into it and to spread more compassion. And then last week we talked about courage. And you know, we talked about understanding that courage didn't mean um, not being afraid, right? Courage meant standing up in spite of being afraid. Um, and this week we're gonna talk about temperance. Um, temperance is, wow, temperance. Temperance is one, for, for me personally, it has been one of the more challenging, um, the challenging virtues to work with. When I first started with coming to Hecate and made my way up from uh, into Torchbearer, and I started working with other other people um, in inside or outside of the covenant. Um, I always felt like I had to get the last word in. I had to make sure that I was being heard. I had to, I don't know, dominate the conversation. I had to basically, I guess, prove who I was. And it, it led to a lot of imbalance, let's say. It led to a lot of, you know, people getting mad at me, people complaining, um, me complaining about them, a lot of just rubbing, it, it was just an imbalance. That's the best word for it. And it took a lot for me to really sit down and understand um, what it really meant to be to be temperate, right? We think of temperance, when we think of temperance in the United States anyway, we think about the temperance movement and, you know, abstaining from alcohol and that kind of thing. And that's how I took it to start with. Um, and then I really got into it and I started understanding what it fully means um, to be able to have balance, right? Um, one of the things that I learned in doing this exploration of that word was uh, you don't have to attend every argument you're invited to, right? So just because someone comes at you and says something, you don't have to respond. You have a choice, right? You can choose balance or you can choose imbalance. So I found myself really, really seeing issues, trying to you know, maintain that that equilibrium, right? That between emotions and thoughts and actions. It was extremely uh, challenging. And I know it was challenging for those around. Uh, there were many conversations that I had with um, with Sarita on this and, and learning from really from her wisdom. Um, she was very, very helpful and helped me grow quite a bit. Um, it, it was her, and of course, uh, that was with Covenant Hecate, but on a personal note, you know, I worked very closely with Callan, and it was, uh, not Callan, I'm sorry, Callan, <laughs> Alexis. Um, I have a certain mindset when I see her, and it always goes back to that word. So I did misspeak, I apologize, I did misname. Um, all right, so as, as I'm gonna go back onto this, let's get back, get this cart back on the track. Um, as, a, as a person who works with holistic wellness and who tries to help others learn from my experiences, you know, I, I discovered this tea. I didn't make this tea, I didn't invent it. I'm not making any money from it if you buy it or you don't buy it. Um, but I found it's great and I talk to you about it every day. Right, because I think it's a great way to improve your health. Um, the same way with you know the the uh, sound, the crystal balls, playing the crystal balls. You know that is the way that I kind of um, 
find that balance and find that way of humbling and getting myself to a point to where I can um, be okay with who I am. So when we think about temperance, right? Sometimes it's not, sometimes it's not the easiest way to go. Frankly, for me, it wasn't. And I've I've been a member of Covenant Hecate and we have a membership center and we bring in and one of our questions is what is one of the most challenging um, of the of the virtues for you and temperance comes up quite a bit so I, I feel like I, I feel like I'm not alone in this but I think understanding that you know you have to have a balance in your in your life understanding that you know for me to maintain my balance I need to I need to be a vegan. I need to have a spiritual practice. I need to find time for myself so that I can do the things that I like to do as an artist. Um, so I think that that helps. Um, for us right now, we're just getting moved back into the house. So, you know, our art space isn't set up yet. I have this little nice space that I have and I have my workspace, um, but we haven't really gotten that finished yet. We're still cleaning out the, the storage unit, trying to get everything together. So and that's the next thing. I think if I get that space and then I'll be able to, you know, start making art again, it'll be very beneficial for my own level of temperance. Um, so we let's let's now think about this on a little bit of a broader scale, or actually what we'll, let's talk about uh, Hecate. So how does temperance why is temperance one of our virtues? So with my notes here, um <laughs> I have uh, three different ways that I feel like uh, temperance is shown, right? One, I feel like as a mediator between two worlds, right? She's the goddess of the crossroads. She, that in itself is balance, right? That is a balance between these, these two worlds. You know, she exists in light and dark and life and death. And she acts as a bridge between these opposing forces. And her ability to maintain that balance between these realms is central to her role as a deity, I think, right? That's what we, you know, we look to her for, for balance. So that would be the first way I would say that, uh, that temperance really is really one of her virtues. Then we have the, uh, the triple bodied, right? Three bodies standing at the crossroads, three, uh, round, three forms representing, you know, her dominion over the earth, the sky, and the underworld, right? So that's her three phases. And all of this, all of her ability to exist in all three of these realms, right? And she will guide people who are looking to balance those. So I think that's another way she fits in. And then of course, in the myth of Persephone, um, she is that mediator between the living and the dead. And she guides uh, Persephone on her journey, right? She's there to help, you know, balance her. Um, she maintains her, temperance and in actions you know she is that guiding force there so I, I think that is really one of uh, or the third way that I found that she she actually related to now there are countless other uh, poems and hymns and songs and chants that reference uh, Hecate as that balance force um, how do you think it works for you? Do you feel like there's a, any connection between Hecate and Temperance from your perspective? Um, has she been a balancing force in your life? You know, how have you grown or not grown from working with her? I think that we all have a certain amount of um, connection to the goddess. And I think that once we get our selves lined up in a space where we can actually um, communicate that to each other some of the some of the places that we are today are very very narrow very shallow right we're not able to really connect to people on a very personal level i think that once we're back able to do that we'll see a change in um, how we actually are able to communicate that feeling of imbalance to others all right that is our discussion. Let me just double check. Oh, no, no, no. We should actually talk about one more thing. Yeah, I was trying to let y'all go early. What in the world? Okay. So what we're going to talk about now is what can we do today, right? What can we do today to, to bring temperance, to bring that temperance back into our lives, right? How can we manifest temperance? 
Um, one of the things that we commit to when we join Covenant Hecate is that we commit to um, trying to live our lives as close to the five virtues as we can. So, you know, we try to follow all of the five virtues um, it as not only an example, right, but also as a path. We feel that it's what we want to do. So a couple of ways that I've, I've jotted down that you would be able to bring that back in is thinking about moderation in consumption, right? So the things that you're bringing into your body, you could practice mindful eating, um, you could avoid overindulgences, you could live a cruelty-free life, um, you could um, take up veganism as a way to kind of line, align yourself with, uh, with temperance. Um, and one thing I want to go back to is the pra practice mindful eating. That is so important. Um, there's a there's a signal when you're eating, right? When you're eating food, there's a signal that comes from your gut to your brain that tells it that it's full, right? That it's it's done eating. Um, when you are not being mindful, when you're not consciously chewing and eating, if you're doing other things, then you may miss that message. And when you miss that message, you overeat. That leads to weight gain, which leads to knees and hips and heart disease and diabetes and all sorts of other things. Um, so practicing mindful eating and then of course living a cruelty-free life. Um, I'm gonna touch on that. I know it's a touchy subject. Lots of people throw their hands up and get very upset when we start talking about um, uh, Hecate and veganism, right? People get all freaky dilly. I'm not telling you you can't be a vegan or you can't be a vegan and follow Hecate. I'm not saying Hecate was vegan. I'm not saying her followers are vegan. What I am saying is that if you cut down on some of the things that are related to cruelty to animals, not only will you start feeling better from a health perspective, but you'll start feeling better from an energy perspective. And the reason that I believe that is because I believe that when we eat food from from animals that are suffering we eat that suffering and that suffering comes out in us so take you start with meatless monday right start with you know no more milk right start with you know we're gonna give up cheese something like that i wouldn't start with cheese cheese is probably one of the hardest things to give up and that is because it is extremely addictive um look it up um okay another video um back to temperance um the next thing is that you can look for ways of balancing work and life right so your work-life balance um i have a i do consulting for um, understanding work-life balance and and maintaining mindfulness um this one is very important in finding a way to see rest as productive now, I struggle with that. I have been on uh, my staycation. Let's see. I have been on my staycation 12 hours, 20, 24 hours, 24 hours. And I am ready to go back to work. I like work. I like being busy. Um, and sometimes I forget and then I work too much and then I don't have time to do the other things I want to do. So understanding that work-life balance is imperative. Understanding that we can't function if things are not balanced, right? So that's one way, another way you can do that. Um, the third way I have on my list is emotional temperance. That means keeping your emotions in, tech, in check. Um, reacting with patience instead of impulsiveness, right? So when we're, when we're talking about this, we're gonna go back to the last, uh, I don't know, a month or so ago, we did a, a vlog on, um, on nonviolent communication. Um, that was another thing I picked up from uh, my experience with Covenant Hecate. Um, I got that book through them. Um, you can use that same type of energy to keep your emotions in check. So when you go into a conversation and you're coming in to talk to a jackal and you're coming in with giraffe, you are going to already be at an emotional balance and that's what you're trying to achieve. The next thing we're gonna talk, oh, of course, your spiritual practice. 
So finally, one of the things that we require for our torch bearers um, is that they have a daily practice. So whatever your daily practice is, maybe it's lighting a candle, maybe it's saying a prayer, um, maybe it's going for a walk, you know, whatever your daily ritual is to the goddess, your daily devotional, um, that is when you are looking to find that peaceful state. You, you, we, you know, generally we don't interact with the deities when we're at a heightened emotional state. It's generally not a good plan <laughs> to do that. Um, we try to come in with balanced energy and um, that's just my opinion. Maybe you do, if you do, you do you. <laughs> um, but when we, when we integrate that sense, that daily ritual into our lives, it will help you achieve a lot of, uh, a lot of grounding that you might not necessarily have. And of course that grounding force is gonna work and bring the pendulum down so that you're in a balanced state. So what we've really been talking about today really is temperance, which is the balance of, it, it's a virtual balance and harmony, right? It's keeping those things together. Um, we talked about your emotions. We talked about how to be more mindful in your daily, daily life so that you can achieve that balance. Um, when you are thinking about this today, um, and, and I encourage you, you know, I'm going to post this in the, the members forum as well, but, you know, feel free to comment here if you prefer. What are you doing? What are your thoughts and your actions doing that are bringing this particular uh, virtue into your life? How is it impacting your life? Um, are you able to see it? You know, do you feel like you need someone to help guide you through that? Um, think about those things. Leave them in the comments. And, um, i just like to say, as it, just as Hecate stands at the crossroads, helping us navigate between worlds, may we all find the balance and walk our paths with grace and harmony. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed that little talk. I'm gonna move this over here. And I'm going to do your pull. We are pulling from the River Witch Oracle, of course. Um, I am still working on that deck. I am gonna get it done on this vacation, I swear. All right, here is our card for today. Let me hold it up. And that is the North card. The North card's keywords are stability, knowledge, and discovery. So when we're talking about stability, right? It's funny, we were just talking about temperance and balance. So if you're not balanced, you're not stable, right? Uh, I swear I didn't plan that. <laughs> um, but it, stability is when you have something to um, keep you on point, to keep you where you need to be, um, being stable, being understood, being whole, um, all of that kind of energy that you're gonna be looking for today is a balanced energy, it's a strong energy. Um, your next word on the card is knowledge. Knowledge, of course, can mean two things. It can be knowledge to give or receiving knowledge. So keep your mind open today. You know, this is the North energy, right? It is coming in from us from that direction. So be open to those kinds of things that would bring you closer to the earth and bring you um, spiritually anchor you, right? That's what knowledge, it's a foundation. Our final word is discovery. Um, discovery is learning, finding, looking for new things. Um, so while we're in our day today, look for ways to take a chance, right? Um, go for an extra walk, take a nap, do something different. Um, sometimes diff being different or trying something different can be a little scary, but go ahead and give it a try today. I think you'll enjoy it. So that is our reading for today. I hope you've enjoyed our talk on uh, temperance. Um, next time, I think, I think we're going to do justice next time. So we'll talk about justice next week. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to leave them in the chat. And uh, I will see you then. Have a glorious day. And I'll talk to you soon.